Often on Doji Show, you'll hear me talk about fractals. But what are fractals? Most people I've encountered either aren't sure or have a malformed notion of what they are. In trading markets, people have taken the term fractal to mean all sorts of things, most of which are incorrect. Let's go on a journey to get to the bottom of nature's most mysterious pattern and hopefully gain some new market insights along the way on this episode of The Doji Show. This episode of Doji Show is brought to you in part by PineBot. Visit PineBot.com today for access to the world's most advanced algorithmic trading bots. Put your portfolio on autopilot with PineScript powered AI. Long and short, bull or bear markets. Browse the strategy marketplace and subscribe to user created bot strategies. Then load them up in our easy to use bot commander interface. Deploy the best strategies against the market for the win today at www.pinebot.com. And welcome back to Joji Show. I'm your host, Tensor Tom. A quick Google search for trading fractal compression seems to only turn up relevant results by, well, me, Tensor Tom. I've noticed that some of the traders I associated with in the past have picked up on some of my ideas regarding fractals and use them quite regularly, but it seems as though the general trading public have yet to really catch on to the idea. To understand where I'm coming from with this, let's lay out a bit of history first. My love affair with fractals started back in the 1990s, but the story of fractals goes back much farther than that. In fact, you could say that it goes back all the way to the beginning of time. But uh, let's start somewhere a little more sensible first. Since fractals are a relatively new concept in human history, let's just go ahead and read the dictionary definition. A fractal is defined as a curve or geometric figure, each part of which has the same statistical character as the whole. Fractals are useful in modeling structures, such as eroded coastlines or snowflakes, in which similar patterns recur at progressively smaller scales, and in describing partly random or chaotic phenomena such as crystal growth, fluid turbulence, and galaxy formation. When teaching someone about fractals, it's often useful to have them visualize something that they're familiar with such as a sunflower or a conch shell. Those two items are indeed fractal. But what helps the most is something that most people aren't very familiar with, or at least they don't realize they're familiar with it, even though they've probably seen it uh, many times before. I'm speaking, of course, about the Mandelbrot set, which you can now see here on your screen. Notice how it's repeating. It's self-similar, and all of its smaller parts make up the larger whole. Indeed, it's quite beautiful, and it's this sort of fractal pattern that can be found everywhere in nature. From every neuron in your brain, to every snowflake, to every galaxy in the universe. And yes, on your Bitcoin chart. At the turn of the 20th century, hostility was growing between some groups of mathematicians. The cause of this tension was that certain analysts had shown that functions need not necessarily possess some properties which other analysts thought functions ought to possess. Mathematicians such as Carl Weistross were inventing new functions so bizarre as to shock much of the mathematics community. Hermite and his pupil Poincare in particular described Weistross's new creations as deplorable evil, and these mathematical functions were sometimes referred to as mathematical monsters. The name fractal arises from the concept of a fractional dimension. What this means exactly 
is difficult to describe in simple terms and without getting into Euclidean geometry. Instead, it's easier to simply try to give a feel for what fractals are and what sorts of behaviors they exhibit. For any computer programmer who might be watching this, the easiest way I like to think about fractals in abstract terms is as a recursive object self-similar as a result of iterating upon itself. Of course, you don't have to be a programmer to illustrate this though. Generally, fractals are the result of a process which a procedure is repeated again and again. And one of the most basic examples of a fractal is obtained in the following way. Start off with an equilateral triangle, which has side length of one. Now, on each edge of the triangle, add a new equilateral triangle with sides of a length of one third. Now, in the middle of each side of this new shape, add a triangle with the sides of a length of one ninth. Continue this process, each time adding new triangles to each side, which are one third the size of the triangles added in the last step. When you're done, well, you'll never be done. <laughs> you'll have the desired fractal shape. This process can repeat forever. It is essentially infinite in its recursive nature. A quick side note about programming. Uh, the first time I had ever even heard of fractals, I believe I was about 14 years old, and I had picked up a book called Fractal Programming in C. Now, I'm not going to torment any of you with C code, but instead, I'm going to go ahead and leave a, a script, a Python script, in the description of this video so that any of you who wants to check out how to code a really simple snowflake fractal called a Cantor set may go ahead and do so. Now that you have a better idea of what fractals are, Let's see if we can sort through some of the muck that's been promulgated through the trading community over the years. One of the first things that comes to mind is the Bill Williams fractal trading methodology. Now, Bill Williams uh, is certainly one of the more famous traders that we all probably know about. Uh, he created a few really famous indicators that a lot of people still use. And there's nothing wrong with that. I believe there is plenty of merit to uh, his methodologies and his indicators. But uh, so let's just go ahead and read the Bill Williams definition from Investopedia. So uh, the definition on Investopedia says uh, when people hear the word fractal, they often think about complex mathematics. That is not what we're talking about here. Fractals also refer to a recurring pattern that occurs amid larger, more chaotic price movements. Fractals are composed of five or more bars. The rules for identifying fractals are as follows. A bearish turning point occurs when there is a pattern, with the highest high in the middle and two lower highs on each side. A bullish turning point occurs when there is a pattern with the lowest low in the middle and two higher lows on each side. So it, here's an example of a Bill Williams fractal, both bearish and bullish. And, you know, what I would say about this is just flat out that these are not necessarily fractals at all. And even though it clearly states that, it does tend to create confusion in the trading community because when I start talking about fractals, I am never talking about this because just because someone decided to start calling something that they were doing fractal doesn't make it true. And it's just it has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. So when I talk about fractals in this video or anywhere else, we are definitely not talking about Bill Williams or anything he created. The other misconception worth mentioning is that fractals are just simply repeating patterns. And you see this a lot actually. Uh, I'm gonna take an excerpt from an article that I found in Google that says, do not use fractals when trading. And it goes on to say fractals, sometimes called analogs, uh, are historical chart patterns that repeat themselves. 
when a trader uses a fractal, he's essentially saying that the market XYZ is copying market ABC. So you see that this too is another uh, misconceived definition of fractals. Uh, just because a pattern repeats itself does not make it a fractal. And indeed, uh, there have been a few times where I've been in a voice chat and I heard, I've heard someone come onto voice chat and say, yeah, look at this fractal here, look at this repeating pattern, how it, you know, this is a, f check out this fractal. When it's not a fractal pattern at all, it just happens to be something that has repeated itself, and that also is not the definition of a fractal, and it doesn't help us understand the fractal nature of the market at all. So now that we have a decent idea of what a fractal is and what a fractal is not, let's talk about how we can apply that knowledge to the markets. Firstly, let's go ahead and demonstrate that fractal patterns are indeed occurring in the markets. So I'll go ahead and pull up a Bitcoin chart, but this applies to any chart you can think of. So what you'll first notice as far as fractals go is that regardless of whether we are on the one minute chart or the daily chart or the monthly chart or the hour chart it doesn't matter which time frame that we're on you won't be able to tell which time frame we're on unless you're on a chart that you know happens to not have much price history but for all intents and purposes uh, regardless of what time frame you visit on a chart you will not be able to tell by looking at the candlesticks which time frame you're looking at unless you already have foreknowledge of the chart itself. This is our first clue. Next, rather than just proving this at a glance, take a look at, let's say, the minute chart and notice the patterns that it's forming. Then go ahead and go on to a higher time frame and look at the patterns forming there. You'll notice that they are the exact same patterns and moreover the patterns that are forming on the minute chart are making up the singular pattern that is forming on let's say the four hour chart or it depends on the particular pattern that's playing out at that moment but most likely you will notice this behavior at most given moments actually Probably the better way to do this would be to uh, check the time frame directly above the one that you check first and then keep moving upwards until you're unable to discern the pattern that you started with. This resemblance between the parts and the whole is called self-affinity and is better known as self-similarity. It's just that self-similarity is a term borrowed from photography. And the two terms actually are not interchangeable. So we should probably get away from that habit and just stick with self-affinity. Alright, so rather than speak in uh, generalities, let's go ahead and find a really specific example of fractals in the market. And for this, I'd like to turn your attention to uh, a really good example, one of my favorites. It is EOS. This is a, the cryptocurrency EOS, and the pair is EOS to BTC. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start with the day chart. And looking at the day chart, you can see that we have this pattern here. It's called a cup and handle. A lot of you are probably familiar with this pattern. Um, it's a very well-known trading pattern that most people are familiar with. And the thing about this pattern is... It's a very fractal pattern. So we're going to start with the day chart and what we're going to do is we're going to keep halving the time frames all the way down until we get uh, down to the minute chart. And once we get there, you're going to realize that every time we went down a time frame, uh, the pattern was exactly the same as the one above it. So let's go to the day chart. And now we're going to... Uh, Notice the cup pattern here, and now we're going to half it to the 12 hour chart. And notice you can still see the clear pattern. 
now the six hour chart and there of course it is still now we're going to go down uh, not to three but we'll go to the four hour chart and the two hour now the one hour 30 minutes 15 minutes 5 and now 1 alright and now we will demonstrate this in the opposite direction uh, to show that it is the smaller cup and handles that are making up the larger cup and handles that are making up even larger cup and handles that are then making up the largest cup and handle so we'll start here at the one minute we'll move up now to the five now up to the 15 the 30 minute and notice how as we move up the pattern looks the same uh, it, it actually looks like we're sort of looking you know at the exact same thing but really each time you move up uh, to a large enough degree you're seeing a whole new cup that you weren't looking at before I mean you were looking at a smaller uh, a smaller um, part of it which is a cup but they all make up each other in a nested fashion sort of like um, uh, a Russian doll sort of thing and so uh, we'll go up uh, to the the hour chart the two hour chart the four hour the six hour and let's just go back to the day now you might be thinking to yourself well uh, that's just, that's all fine and good, but that's just one example. Uh, how can I apply this to, you know, every chart, not just EOS? And what's great about that is that this doesn't just apply to a cup and handle pattern. When you hear people talking about um, head and shoulders and things like this, uh, pretty much, you know, any chart pattern you can think of is going to be this same fractal nature. So when you see a chart pattern, uh, when, you can, when you identify a chart pattern on a high time frame, you'll be able to, without a doubt, uh, zoom in to smaller time frames and see the same pattern playing out, uh, making up the whole in small parts. Now, of course, invariably, the question that follows is how to take advantage of this. And so, if you see that the pattern is playing out on a higher time frame and you know that uh, the pattern makes up itself on lower time frames you only then need to uh, zoom down to one of those lower time frames right and since you know uh, the pattern you then know where the price is going to go because it has to keep following that over and over again to create itself on the higher time frame. This concludes part one of the fractal market series. There's a lot more to cover on this topic, including the fractal market theory, different patterns, mathematics, programming, and automata. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with others who you think might enjoy it as well. Until next time, this is Tensor Tom on Doji Show Docs. Wishing you a happy trading.